Today we have a, a video that I'm particularly excited about. Um, we're going to be going through our a, a to B test of a pressurized ferment versus a non-pressurized ferment using a, an ale yeast for cider. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is to kind of see if there's any real difference between a pressurized ferment and a non-pressurized ferment during ideal conditions. Our cellar temperature right now is about 64 to 67 degrees. It's in the winter months inside the Pacific Northwest, so we are at an ideal temperature to do both ale and lager ferment based off of uh, where you are choosing to store your fermenter. So the question that I'm trying to answer today is, is there even a benefit to doing a pressurized ferment during ideal conditions? So that's what I'm trying to answer today. The yeast that we'll be using today for this side-by-side uh, side -side comparison is uh, Cefail SO4. We'll be using five gallons of honey crisp apple cider and sorry I have notes over here uh, 10 grams of citric acid mixed with 6 grams of fermato and 26 grams of water and we're going to add it during our primary addition oxygenate the the wort and then we're going to let it sit we're going to see three things one is we're going to see which one finishes quickest so I'm going to be taking readings uh, once a week to see which one of these two batches finishes quicker uh, the second, we're going to be comparing uh, flavor and see if there's any difference in flavor or uh, any sort of notes of off flavors. And the third one, we're going to be checking to see what gravity it finished at. Both of these, both of these ciders, as we're using a comparison of the exact same ciders, they're both starting at 1.050. That should be our test. We're going to see, uh, we're going to see side by side, see if this uh, actually uh, makes a difference inside your ferment if you are doing it during a time of year where it's ideal to do uh, your fermenting without temperature control. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So we have our sanitized spoon over here, just mixing this around to make sure everything is nice, evenly combined on both of these uh, containers of citric acid and fermato and we're just going to go ahead and dump these both into our fermenters and over here perfect next now that we do that we're going to go ahead and add in our cider So our two fermenters have been filled up with the exact same ingredients, exact same yeast, and are starting at the exact same time. The only difference is that this one is being fermented at 15 PSI with this spunding valve, and this one is being uh, fermented at atmospheric pressure. We're going to see which one tastes better, if they even there's a difference at all, perceptible difference, uh, and we're going to see which one finishes quicker, and if there's a difference in uh, clarity or any other fun bits that we may notice. Today we are continuing our comparison of a pressurized ferment versus a non-pressurized ferment at ideal conditions. So both these ciders have been fermenting for about a month and a half. They have been completed. We have no airlock activity on uh, this fermenter over here. Um, or I should say it's more of it's just degassing phase right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a reading of both of these and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and sample and we're going to see 
what the differences are between the two of them. So let's go ahead and pop this lid off. We're just gonna go ahead and take a sample through it. Now, if you recall, the only addition that was made to these was a little bit of pectic enzyme um, and some uh, acid correction. We added a uh, 10 milligrams, I believe, or 10 grams of um, citric acid. So we're gonna go ahead and take a sample of this and get a final gravity. But it's not getting enough of this to get a sample. Let's go at a diagonal angle all the way down. There we go. I think that's a pretty good sample now. So I got a little bit of yeast cake on the bottom there. All right, this is at 1.000 exactly. Let me make sure that's correct. Give it. Yep, 1.000 exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the yeast cake and just siphon off a good sample, the yeast in it. Okay, this looks to be Get more of that yeast out and then just do a pure fresh sample right off the top. Okay, right there. So to do a side-by-side -side comparison, it's important that we don't have the uh, yeast affecting the flavor of it because we don't intend on having that in our final product. We're gonna get rid of all that yeast when we rack into a secondary. So first cider is over here. Let's go ahead and take a measurement of this cider. The pressurized ferment. Now with a pressurized brew, it's important to swirl it around and get a little bit of degas action on. Um, I did vent this to nearly atmosphere at about two to three PSI so I can get any of that sulfur smell out of it. All right. I'm gonna give this a second to clear. And we'll be back in a second. Uh, looking at this, it appears that it's at about uh, 0.998 for finishing specific gravity on the pressurized one. So a small specific gravity difference. Um, that could be due to a number of things. Residual CO2 inside the brew um, is probably the leading culprit. So, for all intents and purposes, they're both completely dry though. So um, now we're gonna convince our side-by-side -side taste and smell comparison. Uh, uh, time of fermentation wise, both of these uh, took a month and a half to get to this point. Um, and it appeared that they were kind of neck and neck uh, with each other in fermentation speed. So no real discernible fermentation difference in speed. Um, so I'll start with the non-pressurized one first. Definitely a bit of apple on the nose. It's dry. It's good though. Very good. Um, smooth and uh, kind of clear. Uh, a little bit light in body. A little bit light to medium in body. The apple flavor, there's a, lot, there's a good amount of residual sweetness in this one. I think uh, the, I like the amount of residual sweetness in this. It is there. It is completely dry cider, though. So, yeah. Color-wise, do a side by side. I should have done color difference side by side. Color is about the same. It's a, a blondish color for both of these. Um, one thing to note is that this did not completely clear. Uh, I have some of the juice still sitting around inside of my um, cellar and the the juice itself even when it sits inside a cold temperature for a long time doesn't clear either so that gives me the impression that um, that's uh, just protein haze in it and the only way we're going to be able to clear that is either filtering or uh, using a fining agent so go ahead and do that in the future so compared to uh, our pressurized ferment A 
Right off the bat, I can tell you this one has a definitely a stronger nose. A bit more acidic than the other one, too. Um, that's likely due to the carbonic acid from being dissolved in the solution under pressure. Smooth to medium body, or light to medium body. It's very smooth, very similar to this. Let me do a side by side. Very, very close. Um, the biggest difference I see with the pressurized one, it has a significantly stronger aroma. So, keeping it under pressure apparently allows the aroma of the apple to stay around longer, so uh, that is a bonus. Um, I imagine with the, uh, uh, even though that's at low temperature, uh, for this it was about 63 to 64 degrees inside our cellar for uh, about the past three months. So uh, it's at a good temperature range for this yeast, which was Cephale SO4. It is an English ale yeast um, known for a crisp after flavor or a crisp ferment. Kind of doesn't add any, it is, it's not supposed to impart any extra flavors. And it really didn't. This is a fine dry cider in either regards. Uh, hazy, obviously, but um, we aren't going to be able to do anything about that without finding agents. Haziness is not an issue in, in cider in general. Um, you can have a perfectly fine hazy cider. Uh, just some of the style guidelines and if you're going for styles and for competitions, you need to find out your cider in order to get it to be clear for the BJCP. But if you're doing uh, USA Cider Makers, they don't really care as long as it um, fits all the other criteria for the style. So um, clarity, not an issue um, right now. So, yeah, once again, virtually indiscernible taste difference, uh, with the exception of having a little bit more acid in the, a um, little bit at more acid forward inside the uh, pressurized ferment. Um, other than that, yeah, very little difference. Um, the, uh, the bouquet, if you're going for something with a stronger bouquet and you want to trap in that scent, I recommend pressure, uh, fermenting under pressure, but um, fermenting uh, at atmosphere during ideal conditions, it works just fine. So um, yeah, they both produce a fairly good result, uh, something that uh, anybody would be happy of, happy to have. So uh, my conclusion is just use whatever tools is available to you. If you have temperature control available, I would recommend that in order to keep it within the yeast ideal temperature range. Um, but if you don't have the ability, availability to temperature control, being able to pressurize ferment also is going to produce just a good result. And if you can't do either of those, um, you might get some off flavors if the yeast goes out of its temperature range. Um, so a uh, recommendation to use yeast with a higher temperature range or to um, use, if it's really hot, use something like uh, Kvike yeast uh, to get those esters that they're, that they're, you're, that they're known for. Um, but yeah. That's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you'd like to see more like this, just go ahead and uh, uh, leave a comment below. If not, I'll see you in the next video.